The best Christmas songs. I recently made a video talking about what I consider to be some of the worst Christmas songs, and today we're going to flip it and talk about what I feel are some of the best. I enjoy quite a bit of Christmas music. I've went on listening journeys to discover more. I even sometimes get an itch to listen to Christmas music outside of the holiday season. I will say though, Christmas music for me is something that can get very tiring as a listening experience. Christmas music is a bit limited thematically and sonically, but it is music heavily rooted in tradition, so it's expected in most cases. Like most people, I do gravitate more towards the Christmas classics. I feel like modern Christmas music can be very hit or miss. Most of modern commercial Christmas music are covers that we've heard a million times over. And on the flip side, there are also many artists making originals which I feel can also be hit or miss, or severely derivative. But every once in a while there is a modern Christmas song that takes me by surprise and is quite pleasant. I also think some modern Christmas songs struggle with sounding like Christmas songs. Like sometimes it's just a normal generic trendy top 40 song posing as a Christmas song. Some of them I hear and I'm just like, where are the Christmas aesthetics in this production? Where is the nutmeg? I don't taste any flavors, nothing. Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? I don't taste anything. I don't taste sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, milk, nothing, nothing at all. But seriously, now that I've got my gripe with some modern Christmas songs out the way, here are some of the songs because I can't list every single song, but just that I feel no matter what will remain at the pinnacle of Christmas music and our great songs as well. It's the most wonderful time of the year, Andy Williams. The crooners of the 50s and 60s have come to define a huge part of classic Christmas music. Andy Williams had a career that spanned decades during his lifetime, but none of his songs have outlasted It's the most wonderful time of the year. I think Andy's husky voice gives more leeway to a song that would otherwise be extremely annoying if sung by an extremely high or more juvenile voice. This is a song to me that signals the holiday season has officially arrived. All I want for Christmas is you, Mariah Carey. Yeah, I know, you hear it every day all day during the Christmas season, but it is simply one of the songs in my opinion that deserve it. All I Want For Christmas had a slow and gradual rise to becoming a Christmas standard, and so many songs have since tried to imitate it. It has lodged its way into cultural ubiquity. It has been adapted to a film and book, and spawned various different cover versions by many different acts. In 2017, it was reported that the song had generated $60 million in royalties. I can't help but to feel it has probably generated close to $100 million at this point, if not more. The song is simply timeless, combining classic soul elements with the pop and R&B sonics Mariah would come to be known for, and has a true classic quality to it. So much so that a lot of people don't even know All I Want For Christmas Is You is a Mariah Carey original, and she wrote and produced the track with her collaborator Walter Afanasiev. The song just sounds so primal, as if it existed long before its time. The vocal performance, the production, the instantly memorable melodies, all make for a simply great song. I know some people might be put off about the amount of times they hear it being played during holiday season, but everything about the song itself is legitimately great. And I can understand its mass appeal and how in many ways it has become the Christmas standard, becoming the first song in history to reach number one on the Hot 100 in four separate chart runs, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. It's a defining song and a damn good one. Christmas, Baby Please Come Home, Darlene Love. Funnily enough, Mariah Carey and Darlene Love got into a bit of a back and forth when Mariah tried to trademark the Queen of Christmas title this year. Which by the way, I think is a bit ridiculous. I don't think anyone should try to trademark honorific music titles. Everyone is entitled to their opinion of who the title belongs to. Plus, it's just so broad. Nonetheless, one thing that is factual is that Darling Love has been pumping out Christmas classics for decades at this point, and she certainly has songs of the holiday genre worthy of a crown. Christmas Baby Please Come Home is immaculate, and taken from arguably the greatest Christmas album of all time, Phil Spector's A Christmas Gift For You, which is filled to the brim with lush wall of sound arrangements that have rock and roll sensibilities. 
The song has been covered by various acts such as other Christmas standard making stars, Mariah Carey and Michael Buble, but the original will always have a slight edge due to Darlene's immense conviction. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, Brenda Lee. In her day, Brenda Lee was a regular chart topper, an invisible woman in the era of rock and roll. However, she's mostly remembered for her Christmas standard, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree nowadays, which has endured prolonged popularity. It's one of those songs that are pretty much instantly recognizable, especially due to the guitar part. Brenda recorded this song when she was only 13 years old. The song to date has reportedly sold over 25 million copies, also being preserved in other massively popular pieces of Christmas media like Home Alone. It's easy to see why this song has continued to endure. It's cheery, it's fun, the melody has an alluring sing-along quality to it. It's just a fine piece of rockabilly. Let It Snow, Boys to Men, and Brian McKnight. It's one of those quintessential 90s R&B Christmas classics. And I must admit, I'd rather hear this than any other song named Let It Snow during the holiday season. It's not a cover, it's an original, and it's just so lush. I love the harmonies and the overall softness and warmth of this song. Santa Baby, Earth a Kid. When Sex Meets Christmas, recorded and released in 1953, is actually a very daring song for its time. The song experienced a reboost in popularity after Madonna's laughable 1987 rendition. Even Eartha didn't like Madonna's association with the song, and for good reason. I don't think anyone has done the song as much justice as Eartha Kitt did with the original version. It has the right amount of character, great performance, and the absolutely perfect sultry vocal tone for a song as kitschy as this. Nat King Cole, The Christmas Song Nat King Cole is yet another baritone singer who had an expansive career during his lifetime, helping pave the way for black entertainers and popular media. The Christmas Song went through many different versions that came from Nat. He recorded a total of four different versions during his lifetime, with the 1961 version ultimately being the most popular. His original version, however, was an instant success on both pop and R&B charts. It's one of the most influential Christmas songs, and has a warmth to it that truly makes me feel like I'm in the experience of chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Nat's voice is just so smooth and glides like butter, and it has a really nice simplicity to it. The song was elected to be in the Library of Congress due to its cultural significance. Although it's been said many times many ways, Merry Christmas to you. This Christmas, Donny Hathaway. This Christmas is kind of one of the definitive Christmas songs for R&B, if not the definitive Christmas song for R&B. It's an absolutely soulful masterpiece with a soaring melody and grand vocal performance from the late Donny Hathaway. It's honestly one of those songs that are so good, well-written, and well-performed that you could strip away the Christmas influence and change some lyrics and it'd still be a great song. It's very celebratory and it also has a bit of gospel influence. It remains one of the most performed Christmas songs and undoubtedly one of the best. Last Christmas, Wham. Clocking in at number one and what I feel is the best Christmas song of all time, we have Wham's unbeatable classic, Last Christmas, when heartache meets Christmas and holidays. The song is absolute perfection. The lyrical content during the chorus is a bit on the nose, but it just makes for a perfect pop song. Released in 1984, George Michael solely wrote and performed the entire track. He played every single instrument on the song. I love the juxtaposition of the slightly cheery feel of the Christmas spirit with the melancholic lyrics. The melodies on this song are a cause for the ultimate eargasm. It's one of those songs you have to replay. On the production side of things, it's classic 80s synth pop but the production is not abrasive with its cheeriness or Christmas aesthetics. If anything, it sounds just a bit wintry in general. And the lyrics just talk about a love gone wrong. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, and the very next day you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special, are the lyrics of the famous chorus. What I also appreciate about the song is that the verses are also as equally engaging as the chorus. George Michael wasn't simply reliant on the hook. George Michael sung about many different topics, but a common thread with some of his most popular work is heartache. And the way he was able to effortlessly melt that into a Christmas song, when Christmas songs tend to be overly cheery and peppy, 
is a true talent. And the vocals on this song are delivered with so much emotion, care, and intent. And his closing belt is glorious. I have no shame in saying it's a magical song. The music video is almost like a short film and tells the story of the lyrical content, but with a happy ending with George finding someone new. I think one of the biggest crimes in pop music history is George Michael never releasing a full Christmas album. Although he did release a four track Christmas EP, he never gave much more attention to Christmas music. But with a song like Last Christmas, do you really need anything else? It remains one of the most popular, most covered Christmas songs of all time. It's not only one of the greatest Christmas songs of all time, but it's one of the best pop songs of its time. No one has ever done heartbreak on a holiday better.